On a one-on-one -on -one yeah. level, I have some very dear friends here who actually know what it's like to speak to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and I can inspire them professionally, but whole crowds, I'm not usually into that sort of phoniness, okay? <laughs> um, so on my way here, I get to Kent. I'm like, okay, this is great. I give this speech. So I start texting my friends with my very lame, old-fashioned phone that probably requires to be cranked up, because I'm not a real modern phone guy. And uh, so I texted three friends of mine, and I said, I'm speaking to McNair Scholars. Um, you all know how I am. What do you think I should say? So one is actually pursuing her PhD right now at Penn State. The other uh, is a professor at Purdue, and the other um, is actually a lawyer for the AAUP, which is the union, the, the American Association of University Professors. So it's the union that represents everybody here if you ever have fights about tenure. Um, so, so I text them all, I was like, what do you guys think I should say? And I believe the universal response I got was, Jason, don't scare them. Jason, don't scare them. We know what you're going to say. Don't scare them about pursuing their PhD. So um, with that command, I will try not to scare you. Um, I'm going to talk about three very basic things in the PhD process. Okay, one, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my personal experience uh, getting my doctorate. Uh, then I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the challenges that you will face in this profession in general. And then lastly, get through that, I'll actually tell you why you might actually want to pursue your PhD. Now, um, I started my doctoral process in 1998, okay? Uh, so it took me about 10 years to get my PhD because I got my master's first, went all the way through my PhD. Uh, the reason I started, ironically, was because I had been working as a campaign consultant um, for some races in Maryland, and that inspired me uh, to actually get my PhD so I would have some theoretical knowledge in addition to the practical knowledge of running campaigns. Now, uh, how many of you all have ever seen the show The Wire? Okay, so a couple of you have seen The Wire. So um, there's a character on The Wire. Uh, he's a state senator named Clay Davis who's notoriously corrupt and gets engaged in all sorts of stuff. He was actually based on my boss in Maryland. Uh, <laughs> and so after seeing the kind of corruption that can occur in real world politics, I was like, let me go to grad school. Uh, and then I can learn about the theoretical stuff that allows people to get away with this kind of behavior. So um, I applied to various institutions and, and was accepted at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Um, went through, took my coursework, and I can say with, with absolute passion, sincerity, and a great deal of love in my heart, it was the most miserable, disgusting, and offensive process I've ever been through in my life. Um, here, here. There is no one who will be honest with you and tell you that the process of getting a PhD is any fun at all. The process is not. If anyone tells you that, they're lying to you or they're trying to get you to go to their school, okay? Um, now, you may meet wonderful people during the process. You may learn a lot during the process. You may be happy that you went through the process, but the process itself is not fun. And I learned that immensely. There are challenges that you will face in pursuing your PhD if you decide that it's something that you want to do that will trump anything you have ever experienced in your life spiritually, physically, and for darn sure financially, okay? As I went through the process, there were a couple things that I learned. Number one, in life, it is always important to be incredibly, inexcusably, beyond a shadow of a doubt, humble, okay? Especially, especially when you are in a profession that more often than not, promotions and advancement and even the attainment of the degree is completely subjective, okay? You have to learn how to defer to people that you may not respect. You have to learn how to defer to people who you may not like. You have to learn how to defer to people who speak languages you may not understand. But it's an important part of the process of getting your PhD, and learning that humility benefited me immensely. The next thing that you have to learn when you go through the process that I experienced is that um, you have to learn how to be very, very self-reliant, okay? The process itself will challenge you in ways that you can't comprehend. You've got to know how to make your own money. You've got to know how to connect with the right people. You have to know that people will stab you in the back and betray you. And trust me, this is not some Hills drama stuff. It's, just, it's professional. <laughs> it's the absolute truth. When you are in graduate school, you're nothing, OK? You are, trust me, there are people on welfare who will make more money than you in grad school. I'm not kidding, OK? Because your stipend in graduate school is probably going to be, if you're lucky, about seven to $800 a month, OK? Um, and that's if you're not working 12 other jobs and if you're not taking a lot of loans. So consequently, you are working hard for people who get no benefit from working with you, and you're getting paid nothing to do it. 
<laughs> okay? So you have to learn how to be very, very self-reliant. Now, um, my process was unique, and I'll, I'll say this before I move into the challenges in general. Um, I had a very uh, challenging PhD process. Me and my advisor uh, did not get along very, very well. And, and by the end, uh, I was so, so very happy to be free. And, and many of you uh, may or may not have that experience when you go through your PhD process, but I'll be honest with you, nine times out of 10, you will have a sort of, there's a, there's a bizarre relationship that you have with your dissertation advisors. It's the mixture between a really bad, like, dating relationship in your 20s and a marriage that's lasted way too long. Um, because you'll, you'll reach a point, you'll reach a point where you recognize that you need this person to get to where you need to go, but once you're done, you may not want to see him again. Uh, so, my PhD process led to that point, and, and I say this because, in all honesty, it, it taught me a great deal, like I said, about humility, taught me a great deal about self-sufficiency, and after all the challenges that I had uh, with my particular dissertation advisor, and I will say this without mentioning any particular names, he's one of the most prominent people in my profession. One of the most prominent people in my profession. I was. I was blessed in many ways to have someone like that as my advisor, regardless of how I felt about him or how we got along. And it was interesting because um, for all the challenges that I faced, and just for example, one of the things that tended to happen a lot is we would be working on different chapters. I would send my chapter to him, and many of you all may have this experience that you, you'll send someone a chapter when you're in graduate school, it takes them months and months and months to get back in touch oh. with you or explain what's going on. Uh, my personal favorite is I would send him chapters and then I would have to fly down to North Carolina to discuss them with him and I would get to his office and he hadn't read them yet. Um, and this happened several times. And so it was interesting because the day before I was about to get hooded and get my doctorate, uh, my advisor came up and put his arm around me, and uh, which I think was the first time we'd ever touch each other. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, he's like, well, Jason, you know, I'm glad to be here. And I was actually surprised that he was there, given how acrimonious our relationship had been. And, uh, and he's like, you know, I'm here. So, well, you know, George, I'm, I'm surprised that you're here. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting. He's like, well, you know, you couldn't have done it without me. And I said, no, I would have gotten it done faster. <laughs> and, uh, and, and he was shocked by this. He was shocked by this. But here's the important lesson. And here's how it goes into the process in general, OK? I had learned, whether he had attempted to train me in this way or not, and it's one of the benefits of getting the PhD, I had learned how to be independent in a way that I never imagined possible. I finally had a relationship with him that I could say what I thought, operate the way that I wanted to, and still continue to move on professionally. It hadn't been hurt by the fact that the day before I was about to get hooded for my PhD, I got a book contract. I don't have to talk to him anymore. But more importantly, had he not put me through what he put me through, and trust me, I under no circumstances think he was trying to make me a better person. I just took it that way. Had he not put me through what he put me through, I would not only not be where I am today, but I wouldn't have the courage, I wouldn't have had the strength, and I wouldn't have had the backbone to say and do what I did the day that he had to walk up on stage and put a hood on me. 